Coach Tucker showed me some photos of the gym you and your manager set up. Yeah, I wanted to work on my game 24-7. Something wrong with our training facility? It doesn't have any candy in the vending machines. <laughs> 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 no, I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any excuses. You know how it is. I do. Yeah. And that work ethic of yours is something we all love about you. Thank you. Yeah, you're going to fit our culture like a glove. Well, I'm excited to be here. I feel like uh, this is a perfect place to start my career. Fantastic. Well, then why don't we talk about our goals for the season then? As a former player, I understand how important it is for an organization to clearly communicate its expectations. And I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page to start the season. Let's do it. We're looking to make the plan. Because once you're in the dance, anything can happen. But we would consider this season a success if we took our first step to respectability. Okay. If you have something to say, MP, now would be the time. Uh, setting your sights low like that, I don't know. It just, it doesn't sit right with me. And no offense, Cliff, but that's a loser's mentality. I understand where you're coming from. And no one should be satisfied with losing. I hate losing. It makes me sick. I get nauseous, headaches, you name it. But it's my job as the general manager to honestly evaluate this roster. And if I compare it to the rest of the league, it wouldn't be fair for me to say we had failed if we didn't win a championship. I see what you mean. But if we don't win a championship, I'm the one that's going to be sick. I love that about you. Surprise us and push us towards contention faster than I thought. Speaking of, we need to set your personal goals for the first half of the season. Coach Tucker is going to walk us through it. We've got some strong opinions on what you should focus on, but we'd like to get your input too. Okay. This is a collaboration. That's great because I have been visualizing exactly how I want my career to be. Visualizing? Yeah. Huh. You know, like meditation and manifestation, mm -hmm. that sort of thing? Well, why don't you manifest some opinions on this list of potential goals for the first half of the season? Mm -hmm. well, let me know if anything speaks to you. You want me to just pick one? There's a lot to work on at this level, always. And you'll do a little bit of everything, but we find that giving our players a list of uh, specific goals to work on for the first half of the season is the mm -hmm. best way to drive development. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm with it. It also allows us to give you some milestones to track your progress. We'll even highlight on our schedule some key games to use as measuring sticks. Ah, uh, that's that communication that you were talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Go ahead. Pick a goal. You know what speaks to me, coach? I want to prove that I'm the top player in my draft class. That feels like the best combination of realistic and aggressive. That's a tough goal. You've got some extremely gifted players in your class. And I'm here to prove that I'm the best of them. Well, it won't happen overnight, but that's what we'll work toward. Yes, sir. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Wish being a GM was always this easy. <laughs> oh, uh, one more thing. Yep. We got media day coming up. Oh, I love media day. It's always been fun for me as a fan, so this will be cool. Our PR director, Donna Chase, she's going to walk you through everything. She's great. Oh, yeah. You're going to love her. Brian, anything you want to add? Just keep working. Yeah, we'll talk more about your spot in the rotation as we get closer to the season opener. All right. Appreciate your time. Look forward to building something special here. So do we. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Donna. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet you, Donna. 
My manager tells me you're one of the best PR people in pro sports. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm not sure Mr. Wells has the requisite experience to make that call, but I'm glad he thinks highly of me. Shall we talk media day? Yeah, let's do it. Now, this is all pretty standard fare, and I know Mr. Wells signed you up for media training over the summer, so there shouldn't be anything you can't handle. Well, you can call him Patrick. We're not that formal with each other. If that's your preference. It is. Wonderful. We've also secured you an interview with 2K Tip-Off Magazine. If all goes well, you will be the cover athlete for their upcoming issue. Wow, that sounds fun. It is important to note that this interview will not be conducted by our in-house content team, which means anything you say can be published, especially if it's sensational or controversial in any way. It's noted. I'm gonna be up front with you, MP. I'm a team employee, first and foremost. And it's my job to make sure this team is seen in the best light possible. You make the team look good, we'll be on great terms. You make the team look bad, and we will have a problem. But I have no reason to doubt your character. By all accounts, you're a responsible, smart, considerate young man. And it's because I respect you that I want to put my cards on the table. Thank you. Are we clear? Crystal clear, Miss Chase. Please, call me Donna. Now, whenever you're ready, you can take that elevator to the practice facility and start your interview. Telling you, Hunter, best movie I've seen in the past 20 years for oh, sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just wanted to check it out. Definitely. Hey, hey, can I ask you uh, one last question? Oh, shoot. So you grew up in Illinois, about a couple hours outside Chicago, right? Right. And uh, I know you're too young to have watched uh, Jordan's Bulls in the moment, but I was wondering, how has his legacy affected you as you developed into the player you are today? MJ's legacy, man, if you're a hooper from Illinois, that shadow that he casts, you know, it follows you everywhere. I bet, yeah. Yeah, people, you know, they still talk about looking for the next MJ, like LeBron never happened. Still, being from Chicago, that's a pretty heavy burden trying to live up to that. It is, and it isn't, you know. I, um, I don't put pressure on myself for results. I put pressure on myself to work. If I put in as much work as possible, uh, I'll live with whatever happens. So yeah. you're not trying to one up the go. Oh no, nah, man. I'm I'm trying to learn from him. You know how he continued to evolve as a player, how he balanced taking over a game and still keeping his teammates involved. You know, do I do I think that I have greatness? Of course. You know, but it's not about comparing myself to MJ. It's about maximizing my gifts and my talents and using them in a way that leads to us winning more games. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about, winning games. And that's what I hope to do here. Nicely done. I can see that media training's paying off. I was just honest, mostly. But you didn't give them any bulletin board material, okay? It shows maturity and restraint. But I get it. Tooting your own horn feels really good when you've earned it the way you have. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The real pros, they let their game do the talking. Uh -huh. MJ did not hold back on saying bold statements. But come you're on. thinking MJ once he was MJ. He didn't come into the league talking like that. Okay. And you know why? Because that sort of thing doesn't fly when your teammates don't know if you can back it up. All right, that makes sense. Good. I hear you, Donna. All right. Now the right takes some photographs, mm -hmm. and it sounds like they're considering you for the cover. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. So, uh, you got any any advice for me? Pose in a way that reflects your public persona. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know a picture's worth a thousand words. Why don't you head over there now? They're all set up for you. Thank you as always. Good luck. Thank you. 
MP, huge fan. What's up, man? How you doing? You good. Right? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, this is what we'll be shooting today. All right. Stand yeah. right here. Right there. See some of your best poses. All right, man. Hold that. Right there. Perfect. Great. We got what we need. I bet. Hey, do you know when uh, this issue comes out, man? I don't know the exact day, but check us out on socials. It'll be there first. I bet. Thanks, bro. Thank you. You good, MP? Son, you look like an MPC. You need some new threads. Time to talk rotation. Ah, great. I've been looking forward to this. Every NBA player wants to start someday, and I'm sure you're no different. I've never come off the bench a day in my life, coach. That's pretty much the case for every player in an NBA locker room. Until they get to the league. Right, of course. There's no nice way to say this, so I'm gonna put it bluntly. You've got an established player in front of you. You want his spot, you're gonna have to take it from him. Okay. That makes sense. This team is a meritocracy. You get the minutes you earn. Nothing's given. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what your draft position is or how much you're getting paid. You get it done out there on the court, we'll put you in the starting lineup. So just so I'm clear, how do you, how do you make that decision? Like, will you let me know when I've done enough to become a starter? Yeah, we've got some milestones we want to see you hit. You hit them, we'll put you in the starting lineup. This is all pretty straightforward. Like Cliff said, communication is a big part of what we do here as a ball club. I can see that, and it's much appreciated, Coach. Good. Now get ready. It's almost game time. All right. I'll see you later, Coach. See you. Coach, any surprises? What do you say? Yeah, not really. If I want to be a starter, then I got to outplay the guy ahead of me. Simple as that. Yeah. And yeah, that seems fair. Yeah, it's sports. It is what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, not to bring any extra motivation or anything like that, but uh, you know only starters get endorsement deals, right? I already know. You know, dudes on the bench ain't getting no shoot deal. They're not. Not right now, but that day will come. Okay. But right now, let's just take this in. We in the lead. Yeah. I mean, you ever visualize something like this? P man, I never really thought about what the tunnel looks like, man. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not talking about the tunnel. I'm talking about right here. You and me, you getting ready to play in your first NBA game. Honestly, no. You know, nothing prepares you for this, man. No matter how many high pressure situations that you face, it's just, this is different, man. Or what about that open run I got your invitation to? <laughs> You know, things got a little heated between you and you know who, yeah? Well, yeah, that was dope, but we didn't have 20,000 people watching us, man. That's true. That's yeah, true. it's a little different. It's different. All right, then. It's different. Hey, it's hey. different. Yeah. Hey, look, though, I ain't gonna hold you up, man. I know you gotta go win that game. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, so, uh, make Plainview proud, yeah? You already know what it is, P. I already know. Plainview. The home debut for this team and the home debut for the rookie MP. He'll have his chance to make a lasting first impression here in just a moment as this stadium gets ready to rock. And it's our favorite day of the year at 2K Sports. At long last, it's time to roll the ball out there and get the new season of NBA basketball underway. This is Brian Anderson, joined by Grant Hill and Richard Jefferson. Allie LaForce will be our reporter from the sideline. And here's the upcoming schedule for the Cleveland Cavaliers. On Friday, they'll go back home and will be hosting the Detroit Pistons. Then on Saturday, they kick off a road trip in Washington, where they'll take on the Wizards. In that game against the Lakers, that's one to mark on the schedule. It's their fifth game of the year, and we should start to see lineups get sorted out. A look at the opening lineup for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Garland and Mitchell, the talented one and two. 
at the four and the five, the lengthy pair of Mobley and Allen. And it's Okoro in at the three. And for the Raptors, Baird is the three, and Barnes will play the four. Emmanuel quickly is out there with Grady Dick, and it's Pirtle in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. And Grant, a look here at MP, this year's first-round draft pick. He grew up outside of Chicago, and what a moment for him to enjoy his first NBA go. minutes. And you talk to MP about his time growing up, and he shared... Start fresh and build on that optimism. And first quarter, we're about three and a half minutes in. And let's go courtside. There's some news on MP. Hey, Brian. Well, a lot of anticipation for the rookie MP as he makes his NBA debut tonight. I caught up with him before the game and asked if he had any reflections. Let's it go from 11. And it's in there. Levert's got four points in the quarter. Very comfortable shooting it from there. Levert converts. Get it? Abaji passed to McClung. And a big bounce off the rim, but it sinks right in. He's checked in for Cleveland. Well, you talk about an anchor for this defense. Richard Jared Allen is that. It's hard to find a big man who can move and eat up space like Allen. He's a great shot blocker that can also move his feet on the perimeter and guard in. Hey, everybody. Halftime is upon us, and the scoreboard showing a deficit for the Cleveland Cavaliers. They found an advantage in the painted area, and they're exploiting it. I just say, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, if it ain't broke, please. Okay, guys, now let's see what the fans are buzzing about over on social media. And Hopstep Horace says, Ernie is the best host out there. What's it like sharing a set with him? I promise, fellas, I didn't write that. Hold up, Ernie. Don't you have a cousin named Horace? Yep, and we met him down here a couple years ago. I remember him. I can neither confirm nor deny I have a cousin named Horace, and he may or may not know how to hop step. That does it for halftime. Let's get back to game action. Here's Brian Anderson with the start of the third quarter. And this is exactly who you want taking that shot. You just missed it. And in Garland, we're looking at one of the best passers in the league, Richard. I don't think he gets enough credit for it. He's got such a great feel for the game, the way he wiggles in and out of the lane. It is so impressive. He is such a great, confident floor leader. We've gone about three and a half minutes here into the third. Allen against Pirtle. Allen, pass to Mitchell. Cleveland with another. And he has been on fire this quarter in terms of his scoring. Hopefully, that fire spreads to his other guys and they can rally. Kicks it out to MP. Pass to Barrett. From deep, MP. And the rebound goes to Cleveland. Cleveland again missing. Gets good position inside. May have rushed it just a little. Barnes passes to McClung. Moving along, two minutes gone in the fourth. On target from range. But we've been watching. Back to Garland. Pass to Okoro. The three is up. Toronto grabs the miss. Quickly's got his fifth rebound in this one. And there's 138 left in the fourth quarter. Hits the trifecta. MP's got 11 points in the quarter. Just an important bucket from MP, and he knows it too. From deep, Mitchell. It's rebounded by Barrett. The Raptors with a lead. On the wing, MP to the inside. Oh, and a vicious dunk by Barr. Sorry. MP against 
Mitchell. Money! His team trusts him, and rightfully so. Mitchell makes so many big, important shots because he is a clutch performer. MP outside. Outside Barrett. Back to MP. Let's it go from deep. Good! Another from three. Barry's his 10th triple of the game. Unbelievable, B.A. Unbelievable. There's 10 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. Here's Mitchell. Oh, get up, Donovan. Wow. How about the bounce? <laughs> we can call that bounce per ounce. Can't be denied. Oh, he got it. Oh, he got it to go at the buzzer. Wow. Unbelievable shot. I have no idea how he gets that before. So a close game sees Toronto taking this one. That was an incredible night of hoops. A tremendous finish. They waited until the very last moment to seal it. And so many times we see these close games won by the home team. And that about does it. Welcome, fans. Thanks for joining us for this Friday night edition of the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan along with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. And, of course, David Aldridge is joining us tonight from the sideline. And a chance now to look at the schedule coming up for the Toronto Raptors. On Saturday, they'll take on Carl Anthony Towns and the Minnesota Timberwolves. Then on Monday, they'll go up against Russell Westbrook and the Denver Nuggets. And that game against the Lakers, it's going to be their sixth contest on the year. Fans will be curious to see how this team continues to form as the season goes on. Look at the 76ers starting group. Inside form, it's Martin next to Embiid. young players. A new group in now for the Raptors. Kelly Olenek's checked in for Jakob Pertl. Chris Boucher comes in for Barnes. MP's checked in for Grady Dick. And it's Brown in for Quickly. And the 76ers will go for a different look here. Andre Drummond's checked in for Joel Embiid. Martin comes in for Caleb Martin. Oubre's checked in for George. And it's Kyle Lowry in for Eric Gordon. Hearing scouts talk about MP before the draft, the one concern they had was his hesitation to take over games himself. And I think that's just how MP is wired, right? He's always been a team first player, even if that means sacrificing his own shot a bit too often. Nice pass by MP, showing how unselfish he can be. On the defense of this Raptors team, Craig, they are built to switch. And it's no accident with their roster construction. They like having wings that can guard all five positions. Makes defending a much easier prospect. Roman dishes to Oubre. And he sinks that one in the back of the rim on the way in. And the defense looks soft early on. They've got to sum it up. A little more sense of urgency. Yeah, they've got to do a little more to disrupt their offensive rhythm, too. A three from MP. It's good. He makes his first shot of the game. MP is a cool customer from three. Great form from the up-and-coming player. Maxi on the wing. He's covered by Brown. Maxi passes to Drummond. Some nice ball movement here by the 76ers. Oubre, good. Oubre this is as good as it gets for a first quarter in terms of shooting the basketball. You're exactly right. I mean, everything seems to be dropping. Impressive scoring here. Olenek. Andre Drummond grabs the miss. Oubre outside. Lowry inside the line. And the last shot before the buzzer is off. Paul George, he's been the guy making things happen for the Philadelphia 76ers. 
And if you're just tuning in, we've got a wide margin on the scoreboard, but uh, plenty of time left for a comeback. And a moment here to take a look at the scoring breakdown for the 76ers. Absolutely dialed in from beyond the arc so far in this one. The defense is surrendering the long-range shot here early on. Another thing that stood out to me tonight is their early success at the free-throw line. I mean, they've been able to draw contact and then convert at the line. In at the forward spots, we'll see Barrett and Barnes. And be out there with Bruce Brown. And it's Olenek in at the center, filling out the middle. So that's the five in the game for Toronto. Let's check in with our reporter, David Aldridge. Kevin, the Raptors are rebuilding with purpose. Coach Darko Ryakovic said, we're doing a good job at the start of this process, selecting the right people that care and are very committed to each other. That's a good baseline to build on. Kevin, slowly, the pieces are falling into place. David, you're so right. He is great at developing those young players. Well, and the indeed. shot goes in. Love the confidence from Joel. He gets the ball and knows exactly what he's going to do with it before he gets it. And Joel Embiid is a giant center. Clark, his size, his arm spin. How does his sheer size, uh, do you think, affect the game? Well, he's a mountain of a man. Not only is he tall, he's wide, and he's deep, too, Kevin. In other words, he's hard to get around. And he's also hard to challenge because he's north and south. So, and you factor in his touch, this guy does things that I've not really seen a guy of his size do, particularly when you talk about pity patting the dribble and knocking down face-up jumpers all the way out to the three-point line. It should almost be unlawful for a guy north of three bills to be doing that. I I'd love to see them impose themselves a little more on the backboard. That's a great way to find confidence. Always a surefire way to get back in the game. Well, guys, they need to do something to reduce this deficit. Uh, we'll see if that's the answer. There at the pass to MP. Shoots. Looks good, is good. Bucket number four from the field. He's taken only six shots. And he's really shot the ball well, but, but it hasn't been contagious. Outside Lowry. Embiid inside. He's against Olenek. Embiid, no good. Raptors trail by 18. Here's Barnes. He's now one for two with that bucket. And right where he wants to be. It's so dangerous letting Barnes get inside like that. Jackson passes to Embiid. Jackson kicks to Ubra. And beat inside. Olenek is covering. And not allowing the shooter even an inch of breathing room on that one. And guys, that's exactly the kind of high-impact defense they want to see out of him. A three from MP. Bring it up for MP. A three. Oh, great ball movement there. Here in the second quarter, just under three and a half minutes played. I'm told now by our producer, uh, do we have them, guys? Okay, we do. We have a call coming in from Shams Charania. Shams, thanks for joining us. What do you have? Thanks. Well, the Sixers this summer signing Paul George to create a star trio, along with the great value signings around the edges. Philly is widely regarded as one of the league's most improved rosters. And guys, this team is poised to compete with the league's best. They have a big three and they have a real chance now to win a championship. No doubt about it. We appreciate the update. Thanks, Shams. Pirtle, he is checked in for Toronto. And Philadelphia will go for a different look here. Kayla Martins checked in for Joel Embiid. Paul George comes in for Martin. Eric Gordon, he's checked in for Oubre. And Maxi subbed in for Kyle Lauer. Jacks up a three. Another miss by Philadelphia. Well, he's got a great stroke. That one almost dropped. Down kicks to MP. Stolen by Gordon. Right side Jackson. Shoots over Brown. The 76ers again can't hit it. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. MP, no good. 
looking at Philadelphia. They want to turn it around after the loss to the Bucks. You guys, you just can't afford to give away points from the foul line. Not in the NBA. Teams are just too talented. Yeah, and you know, to come up short at the line is frustrating because that's controllable and it's actually a free throw. So you feel like you leave loose change out there when you don't convert. We're real. Come at us and we're coming right back at you. A little back and forth from long range. I love it. That's a terrific answer there. Five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Gordon deciding where to go with it. Inside, Gordon is at a disadvantage, but he's tough and he's physical. I mean, He's able to play through contact on that shot. The 76ers have been getting it done at the line. 10 for 12. All free throws good from Eric Gordon. And Barrett has got the ball here for Toronto. Down by 15. Olenek finds Pirtle. The three from MP. The shot no good. Good if it goes. No good there. And so that's the end of the first half. 76ers on top, up by 15. We'll be back shortly, live from Toronto. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome. A clinic in execution so far as it's been a dominant showing for the Philadelphia 76ers. They've been fearless tonight. That kind of attitude becomes contagious. I mean, look how many times they've gotten to the strike. And moving along a metric for that first half. Love me some metrics. Checking out the top performer on each team. These two guys, we thought they'd bring it tonight. It has been brought. And that about wraps it up. And as the third quarter is about to begin, we go to Kevin Harlan for the call. And there wasn't too much drama in the first half, but maybe things will tighten up here in the second. You look at MP in this one, he's been everywhere. And what a welcome surprise that first half went above and beyond his usual scoring output. Well, you know what? They've given him an increased role tonight, and he's taken full advantage of it. Taking a look at the 76ers, George in the front court alongside Martin. Cyrus Maxey out there with Gordon, and it's Embiid in at the five, roaming the paint. You know, a trend that's been unmistakable, Greg, over the last few decades has been the number of positionless players. Yeah, and, and I think that's a great thing, right? So many players now with diversity in their skill set, and there's no need to commit a player to a certain role just based on their size. With a short break in the action, gives us a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge. Kevin, thanks. At this point in his career, Paul George says he's in bully mode. He said, every night I'm on the floor, I'm there to dominate. Whether it's being more physical or going right at whoever I got to go at, you're going to feel me. I'm having that approach every time. I'm there to destroy you. Kevin? Wow. <laughs> I love it, though, D.A., got to admit it. Awful powerful. Thank you. The 76ers leading by 17. Outside Gordon. MP grabs the miss. Far from an ideal start here. I mean, this half just one for four so far. Recently, the Raptors made moves, Greg, to add some Canadian-born talent to their roster. They traded for RJ Barrett and Kelly Olenek, two guys that represent Canada in international play, and were both born in Toronto, now playing for their hometown team. Another miss by Philadelphia. Yeah, the offense scuffling a bit to start this second half. Only one for the first five. Quickly the pass to MP. Oh, good with the triple. Philadelphia's gotten blank from three-point land so far in the third. Still 0 for 3. Sure. Count that bucket. 
16 points for Paul George. At the offensive end, he's been assertive and efficient, guys. A big reason why they hold this lead right now. McClung with the bucket. And that's another three. And if it, really, if the defense is hoping that they don't heat up from out there like they did in the first half, they may be in for a real bad surprise. Martin with the screen for George. And they wasted no time getting those three points back. George has got 19 points. Now that last three must have bothered George a little bit. He, he goes to the arc with a purpose and fires off his answer. Barnes dishes to MP. And again, Toronto with the triple. Uh, he's found his rhythm from deep, and, and you can see the confidence. Yeah, I'd be confident, too. As a matter of fact, I mean, if you're stacking up threes the way he is. I mean, he's doing all this work from behind the arc. And with the lead, I like the strategy here. Continue to get the ball to guys who can do something with it. If it's working, keep working. That's what I say. Keep the pressure on. And while we can, here's a look at the teams that had the fastest hands in the league last season. The 76ers, number one. You, you know, I don't know if the numbers even told the story. I mean, their defense was as good as it gets, often just leaving their opponents completely demoralized. Master quickly. Shot from free throw range. And there are the Raptors with another bucket. Guys, that's just really unstoppable. He poses a ton of matchup problems for whomever he's facing. With every passing season, Quickly's role seems to expand. Yeah, you know, Kevin, he's had to prove himself over and over. And now that he has, I don't think you find nearly as many doubters as he had when he first came into the league. No doubt he's struggling right now from the field. Let's see if he can get it going this quarter. Outside, George launches it. And Pirtle pulls it down. Pirtle's got his fourth rebound in this one. MP kicks to quickly. Fires it up. McClung no good. And guys, not sure where his head was on that shot. Not what this offense was designed to create. Not at all. I mean, that's where they want him looking for a teammate, not trying to do it on his own. He needs to share the wealth there. And you don't want to give up that kind of look too often. There at the pass to McClung. Out of bounds, Philadelphia takes possession. And, and that's just carelessness there. I mean, you have got to have your head in the game. Brown is checked in for the Raptors. And then for Philadelphia, Andre Drummond comes in for Joel Embiid. And Oubre is subbed in for Martin. Bounce pass, Maxi, And it's Drummond with the jam. Making opportunities. Maxi smartly using the pick and roll to create for his team. MP outside. Oubre against Barrett. Back to MP. Off target from three-point range. And here at the end of the third quarter, it's a double-digit ball game. 76ers lead by... Here now a chance to show you our assist of the game. And it's presented, as always, by State Farm. And definitely deserving of the prize tonight. How about the read he made here? Looking like a point guard with the pass right on the money. Terrific versatility coming from a big man. Not something that the majority of big guys possess. And one quarter to go in a game that, to this point, has not been an evenly fought contest. They got Scotty Barnes. MP out there with Bruce Brown. Then it's Olenek, and it's Abaji in at the power forward. So that's the five in the game for Toronto. Gordon against MP. MP with a screen on Brown. Sinks the triple. And the 76ers lead by 21. One triple for him in the first half. Now he's hit another. Barnes kicks to MP. Abaji the pass to MP. Buries the long-range jumper. MP's got nine points here in the second half. He's absolutely killing it from outside. Oubre outside. A few possessions into the fourth quarter, just over a minute played. 
and B, no good. Toronto's gone outside a lot tonight. 17 times, in fact. 7 of 17. A 3 from MP. Rebound by the 76ers. Embiid's got his 7th rebound here tonight. Here's Gordon. And he lays it straight in. Inside, Gordon stays loose and free, ready to make his moves around the defense there. And Darko Ryakovic calls timeout. He knows every possession is critical now. Martin's checked in for Kelly Oubre. Raptors trail by 20. Pass to Pirtle. Back to MP. And he gets it to go, hitting off the back of the rim. 27 points for MP. And being able to spot up for that jump shot it is really a skill MP has improved. George with the ball. Craps in the tray. George has got 22 points. And he got loose from the three-point range in the first half and showing signs here that he's still got the flow in the second. Barrett against George. MP, no good. And he rushed that one, no doubt about it. The D. Allen's position, you could see the frustration on his face. So, Greg, you played the point. Uh, and create a player, if you had to pick a different position to play, which would it be? Ooh, good question, Kevin. Probably small forward, wing. Uh, I'd like to be a fearsome finisher who can soar and dunk over everybody. Well, I like the defense there. Right up in his grill, didn't give him a chance. Outside, Martin. Gordon against MP. The three from George. And it's George again missing. Tell you what, the defense was lucky there. I mean, leave him that open from range, he'll typically knock it down. And that one's good, Barnes. How about that wonderful floater he has? Showing off an exquisite touch. George passes to Embiid. And there's a whistle that goes on Scotty Barnes. And that'll be his third foul so far. Some changes for Toronto. Abaji's checked in. And MP subbed in for quickly. A look at the clock. A little under three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth. Maxi finds Martin. Philadelphia moving the ball around. Six to shoot. Embiid sets the pick for Maxi. Makes a big high bounce and goes in. Maxi's got five points in the quarter. Yes, and, and with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who watched it. Just a total mismatch and a true show of strength for the 76ers. It was a standout performance across the board. I mean, it, it was like watching a cat play with a mouse. They, they were able to do more or less whatever they wanted. And it'll go down as their first official win of the new year. And against a conference opponent, always good to take that first win of the season series to establish a psychological edge. Especially because they're going to get together three more times this season. You love to get an opponent figured out early when you're going to be seeing them that often. And we watched one guy all night long, guys. And, and looking at the stats just confirms what a dominant game he had. What a night tonight it was for George. Boy, I liked how he mixed it up on the glass. Wasn't afraid to get in there and do the dirty work. Showed some real grit and toughness tonight. It's good. They just blocked out the noise, kept on grinding, and this is their reward. Boy, a fantastic performance. And I'll tell you something. I mean, you get roadkill, that's always a challenge in the NBA, no matter what. And they got it done. McClung with the bucket. Twenty seconds left in the fourth quarter, and so the 76ers can now just hold on to the ball. Maxi looking it over. So it's Philadelphia winning this one easily to come into an opponent's building and dominate the way they did tonight says, I think, Greg, an awful lot about this team. I guess they don't need home cooking to feel at home. I mean, Kevin, just a match.
talk to people with knowledge of the situation and they say that MP will be inserted into the starting lineup over the next few games. One front office executive from around the league said there is some doubt about MP's readiness to be in the starting lineup, but around the team, the front office, the coaching staff, they are optimistic and they believe that every milestone has been attained by MP and he will only be better with an expanded role. First game in the pros. I'm sure your phone is blowing up. You know, I haven't had a chance to look at my phone yet. Well, when you do, there'll be texts from every person you've ever met mm -hmm. and a few people you haven't. So most notably, there will be press looking for quotes. They can hit me up on text too? They do. And you want to handle this like you would any regular press conference. You want no comment? No comment. You want to answer? Go ahead and answer. Just remember, everything you say is on the record and has an impact. Most importantly, on your team chemistry and your public perception. Okay? Makes sense. Look, emotions run high when a game has just ended, okay? All I'm asking is that you take a moment to think before you respond. Words can get twisted easily in the league, and what might seem like a harmless bit of bragging could be taken as a slight by a teammate, by an opponent, a coach, you name it. I'm under a microscope now. That's right. All part of the business. Understood. Great. If you have any other concerns, press or PR related, you know where to find me. Got your feet wet, now the real work starts. Whatever it takes, coach, you know I'm game. Look, everyone thinks what happens out there is what creates an NBA legend, but they're wrong. 90% of the work happens here, behind the scenes, at practice, in the gym, at film sessions, and in the locker room. I agree. The games are where you prove that you've been putting in the work, no shortcuts. Yeah, correct. Over here is the entrance to our practice facility, and over there is the gym. Everything all in one place, that's great. Yep, made everything as convenient as possible, so there is no excuse to not put the work in. Mm. Now, come here. Right here, we've got everything related to your schedule, including those key games we talked about based on your personal goals. Mm. Coach, that was great. That was really helpful. Which reminds me, we've talked a lot about maximizing your playing career, which is critical. But you need to remember, you become the best version of you so we can become the best version of us. Coach, you have to put that on a t-shirt. I am serious, MP. I'm serious, too. You become This the... is a team game. Everything you do both on and off the court affects our ability to win games. Okay, team chemistry is vitally important to our success, and if you do things that negatively affect that, you hurt the team. A press conference answer that rubs someone the wrong way might mean they, they look you off when you're open, and now we're taking a contested shot instead of an open one. It's all connected, and it all matters. Are we clear? Crystal. Good. Now rest up, rehydrate, and follow the trainer's plan to a T. Proper recovery is just as important as proper training. 
and you get back to work tomorrow.